It might be really exciting in the lionfish. There seems like a, an awful lot of stuff you could lose, um, but also the idea of how to take on pattern within a brush stroke, you know, um, and see if we could make that work uh, also. So this could be more than I can do, but I want to try it. <laughs> So I wanted to pick something that had some surface on it, so I could, uh, you know, stumble through and uh, stumble over and maybe scrape through, and maybe pick up some interesting marks that way. So I picked this one just because it's about the size I wanted and had some surface to it already for some structure. We've got we've got middle already. Um, I'm going to let, if I look at the stripes on the back of this fish, uh, the color of the water is actually coming in and, and blending pretty much with the, the white on the top mm -hmm. where the sunlight's hitting it. There's a value shift there, but I think we could get away with leaving that right now, at least for you know being part of the fish. Um, so I'll look for the darks that kind of define it and um, start with that. And I think, too, I want to get a sense of structure before I get into pattern. And so where there's structure on this is where this is lit from the top, wraps around. Unfortunately, um, with underwater photography, you're always using a flash unless you're in the top six feet of the, of the water uh, column. And this is quite a bit deeper than that. So there is a flash involved in here. The flash is coming from the front, and it's got a warm light to it. So when we look at the stripes in here, as we come back, these are in natural light back here. These ones that go kind of blue-green. And then as it comes forwards and they go a little bit more pink, that's from a flash. I'm going to try and play down the effect of the flash and make this as much in natural light as possible. And that's going to give us a little bit more form. You can see where we have natural light hitting that. It feels like it wraps around. There is a sense of structure to the fish. Where the flash is hitting it, this goes very flat across here. It's flat because it's lit from exactly where our eye is, is right? So we don't have light coming from one side, and we can see light and shadow. Anytime you put a flash on something, it's lit straight on. We lose a lot of the sense of form in that. There are places where the uh, pattern of this describes the form of the fish, and there are places where it uh, defies the form of the fish. And there are places where the stripes are enhancing that feeling of form, and there are places where they're uh, enhancing the sense of flatness. I'm going to try not to make this edge conscious. I just want to have a sense of mass. And the density of that mass, uh, in maybe in here, and then where this gets more uh, frilly, we'll just lose some of the sense of that structure and let it get more of a suggestion of form and less of a real feel of it, less of a description of it. What I'm enjoying is um, what's happening with the scumbled surface right in here. Mm -hmm. There were some of those reds and browns and stuff like that underneath, and then uh, where some of those are still there, it's letting this part go a little more out of focus. Um, I want to keep working with that idea that this doesn't go into focus out here. I don't really need to show it too much of what's going on as far as the detail of this. I want to. We were talking before about you know letting some areas go out of focus, let the eye play here and so on. I'm going to try and pull us in towards the eye and the head of the fish and let as much of this go into paint and texture as possible. So, so you're doing a really light stroke on top of the... Very light stroke here, so I'm letting some of this come through, yeah. Okay. And with not too much paint on the brush.
So you know, there are a number of things that I'm controlling. Uh, one of them is what is the touch of the brush? Normally, uh, you know, going with a pretty soft touch on there. Uh, I like to say you should be dropping your brush about twice a week. It should just fall out of your fingers, um, which explains the carpet. Um, but if you you know drag softly across this kind of thing with not too much paint on the brush, you can pick up all of this. Uh, you know, texture of the brushwork that's going on underneath. And I'm doing a light on top of dark, which is usually my favorite way to scumble. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of artists seem to prefer that. I, I just like the look of it a little. Uh -huh. um, and I think the reason for that is that the high points are lit and the, you know, the, the recessed parts are in shadow and that just kind of works for emphasizing mm -hmm. that texture. So um, as I do that here, try and let this just go into beautiful paint and then you know, from that beautiful paint, it becomes a fish and then disappears off into beautiful paint again somewhere else. So that's, that's kind of the goal I'm setting for myself. Um, in here, I wanted to play with the idea of tangled paint becoming these stripes. I'm going to set myself up for that right now. So um, palette work. I'm going to just start mixing up the colors that I need for this transition. And then I'll try and pick it up in such a way that I can set it down. Maybe 30 or 40 tries before. And is there a reason why you mix with a brush as opposed to a palette knife? Um, mostly it's just because I'm using the brush so much. So I, you know, I tend okay. to just go right just back faster up. For you. Yeah. And it seems to be uh, a little easier to, to reach everything. When I mix with a palette knife, it seems like they're, um, it doesn't always want to push all the way against the glass everywhere. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And so when you dip into it, you might find there's some white, white still sitting it. on the bottom. And yeah. I don't like that. So. Yeah. so I'm making a little range of warm to cool within the lights here and the warmer ones are a little bit lighter the cooler ones are a little bit darker and I'm hoping to be able to set that stroke down in a way that it um, follows the form of that fish in that direction may, may or may not work. <laughs> the stripes then um, are a more consistent value all the way across they're not lighting up very much they're such dark stripes we're not getting much effect of natural light hitting them as they go across the top so most of the form is being described within the lights on this fish. That's going to reflect on my palette work here. So as I set up my darks, they're not going to change as much as they go from light to shadow. Let's see what that does. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's me. fun to watch your brushes too. <laughs> it, is, it is actually. <laughs> Let's see if we can, uh, like I said, it may take me 30 or 40 tries to do this. Mm -hmm. I'll see. Mm -hmm. Better. Yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. If I can kind of repeat that stroke a little bit darker. Time, no, I think I did. It was just, um, mm -hmm. I needed to be able to start smearing this stuff. try loading it a little differently this time and throw some unmixed light and dark together into this pile. Let's see if that works a little better. Hadn't thought of that before, but I like the idea. Mm. Just putting both of that so when I dip in with the brush I can hopefully pick up uh, all these colors together. Brush or knife. A knife would work there too, I think. And if it looks cool there, yeah. it might look cool there, right? Yeah, it looks great. Kind of interested in the way that this all kind of looks on here. It looks kind of lionfishy, actually. Lionfishy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. That made too big of a white stripe there. And I love white stripes. <laughs> <laughs> drag that back across and see. I think the brush worked better in the end. If you didn't do it, you wouldn't know. Yep. And it's always experimenting. It can always work back into this stuff. That's kind of cool. It's not exactly descriptive of the stripe pattern, but it feels like you can feel that, the curve. generally. You can feel the curve of it, and it, yeah. feels, it feels like beautiful mm -hmm. paint, and kind of mm -hmm. feels, it feels a lot like a brush, you know? And so, uh, Let's go back here. yeah, I, I thought it might.
from back there. I might come in and set a couple of subtle descriptive stripes on top of that. I'll try and mix them in with the brushwork that was already there, but just be a, s sneaky about being careful in a couple of places. Mm -hmm. Now in this part, we have a curve this way here and a curve this way here, described by these stripes. Um, it's going to be tricky to make a brush do that, but I'm going to, if you remember on the first day, we faked doing a big wide brush stroke by doing several small ones that followed closely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that now and fake a brush stroke that curves on this way on the top and this way a little bit on the bottom, if I can. Um, and I'll see, I'll see if I can make that look like one mark. Uh, but I, I wouldn't know really how to do it with a brush, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cheat it. <laughs> I'm gonna let, um, I'm gonna let the color of the water be the color of this, the light part of the stripe in a couple places in here. But so I want to fake the value change only within the lights on this brush stroke. There's no way to really do that on one stroke. But if I come in carefully, I can just push right into where the fiber marks are coming off of that and pull the direction. If I pull it really exactly in the same direction as that stroke, it's going to read as one brush stroke coming off. And I think we've done that pretty successfully in here. So this is going bluer in here and getting lighter up on top. And we're describing form in that way. And it looks like one brush stroke still. Um, but it's actually been worked back into. And what's the advantage of having it look like one brush stroke? It's just cool. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, it's already going to be a little softer when I set it down than what I picked up here. So I don't want to come back and pick up more. And uh, in addition to that, I also wanted to um, create the temperature shift within the lights mm -hmm. on this fish right up here so that, uh, so that he's a little bit warmer and over towards the yellows away from the blue. Okay. And light, as it goes lighter and comes towards us. So okay. it can drop back into the, the more true blues and almost, it's going to look like it goes towards purple, but it's really just going towards blue. It's going away from green, so it's right. going to look like it's going towards purple. Right. Um, as it goes back into space there. So as it comes forward, I really wanted to hit it with something just a little bit warmer and uh, let that be describing the form. <clears throat> So I'm trying not to paint these um, spikes that come up here so much, but let them happen in your eyes. So if I just put the, the light on here and everything starts pointing towards the, the back of this fish, I'm hoping that we're going to um, have the illusion that I've painted all the stuff in between. It's definitely starting to happen from a distance mm -hmm. for me. So. And as I come forward with these lights, again, I'm going to push that yellow, greener kind of white in it. That's going to be a little less predictable that way because, you know, we've done so much of the in-focus part of the fish with the brush that now, you know, by changing to a knife as we go somewhere else, it's going to shift up that idea of what in-focus means and how the paint is treated. So trying to find as much variety as possible and how to make these marks and let those express the idea of uh, where your eye is focused. And at the same time in here, just trying to play with um, finding beautiful harmonies too. So the paint is beautiful just of itself, you know, even where it's not descriptive. So that's working pretty well down here, not so much up in here. So I'm going to play with this area. I'm going to go back to the palette and where this is sort of these gray purples, I'm going to try and find a gray green purple sort of combination that is beautiful harmony and replace these marks with that. And it's going to have to be in the same value range as that because we're still describing the form above everything. Having one color in this that's a different value, when I'm making this purple, uh, I made a different value and a different temperature. The, the different temperature is to describe the light stripes. The different value is so that the brush stroke will hold up as a brush stroke at a distance. We talked about on the first day, mm -hmm. optical mixing and how by getting the colors to be the same value uh, and you know, like a, a blue and a red, for example, at the same value, we can stand back, we'll have that vanishing edge, it'll be purple from a distance and it won't show the brush stroke. But if we have a value shift, it will show the brush stroke. So the value shift on this light green in here is going to represent two things. One is going to be a little bit of the stripe and direction of that fin coming off. Another is to make that brush stroke hold up as a brush stroke as we expand off away from the fish. So. I want a little more structure of this. It's kind of working as a mass from back there, but not quite holding up to as much structure as I'd like. So I'm going to push just a little more in. Back there, it's not holding up the structure? Right. Okay. So it's a little too much of a cloud. Okay. I don't mind it being a cloud in places, but uh -huh. um, I want some structure to it as well. This is working better. Come back in with the uh, the ocean behind.
Bye. <laughs> <laughs>